157. for a total of $6,125. There is a volunteer available to help you with your income tax if you need this help and you just contact the church office. Youth with a Purpose is by Zoom with Dorcas on Wednesday, April the 20th from 6 to 7 p.m. The Sunday School Window Project now, uh, the roof project is done and paid for, but we still need $9,000 to complete the window project. Some upcoming things to mark on your calendar. Uh, confirmation classes are still going on. On May 8th, we will welcome you into the church if you've completed these classes. Please register at the church office. Anyone wishing to transfer their membership, please contact Mary at the church office. Games will resume April 19th, um, Tuesday at 1 p.m. Session committee meeting at 6.15. And all other committee meetings at 6.30 on, the, on Tuesday the 19th. And the official board meeting at 7.15. 7 there's an usher seminary on May the 7th from 10 to 11 a.m. Fashion show on May the 14th. More information to follow. May 27th and 28th, the yard sale. We're looking for workers to help with the sale. Need workers for setup from May 23rd until May 26th and to work that weekend. June 10th to the 12th is Impact 2022. For this purpose, I have raised you up, Exodus 9-1. That's Friday, June the 10th at 6 p.m. Saturday, 11 till 12, there's a marriage seminar, potluck at 5 p.m. and a service at 6 p.m. And on Sunday, the 12th of June at 10.30 a.m. is the graduation service and 97th anniversary of the United <coughs> Church. Thank you. For those who are worshiping with us for the first time, we want to welcome you, our friends that are joining us today, both downstairs and upstairs. We appreciate you and we thank you for joining us. We, can you clap a hand for them?
perhaps you are not a, a part of any church, please would like you to be part of this lovely family. Please uh, would like you to fill this card, the ushers will give it to you, just tell them and just drop it with them. We'd like to call you to intimate ourselves with you. We, we just want you to be part of our of this church. Also, we want to thank Karen for and Bonnie for giving us all this this morning. If you have not received one, please make sure to talk to <coughs> Karen. She will give you one. I even danced with Bonnie this morning, and uh, I didn't know who danced better. So I, I think I I want Bonnie this morning, so I should have one more. And we also want to thank. Uh, our cook this morning. I ate the first plate and the second plate. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> and after the service, we still have some. So I'll still go back to the kitchen. So if you miss the breakfast this morning, please, after the service, just talk to Bob. Tell him I want to eat and I, I know you will. We want to thank everyone this morning for doing that for us. We appreciate you. You have actually exemplified the attitude and the behavior of Jesus. Leaving your house as early as possible to come to the church and cook for us. We thank you. Don't forget that every first Sunday in this church is Food Bank Sunday. So we want to encourage all our church members to please uh, let us plan ahead to contribute to the food bank. This is a mission to our community. And you know, if you feed one person, who knows, you might be feeding the whole, a whole generation. So please, let us prepare this uh, first Sunday in May for that. Let me invite the next person for the call to worship. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please let us take the call to worship together. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. God's victory over death has begun. By the Spirit, Jesus meets us here in breaking of bread and of taking of the cup. God forces us into a community and powers the love of the world in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everyone. If you would join me in the opening prayer, which will be responsive to us all together. Dear God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. On the first day of the week, he resurrected by the priest, and out of death came life. And you always come to us through the Holy Spirit to shine light on our way forward offering your gift of new life in Christ Jesus. We praise and honor you for whom you are. Release your spirit anew on us today, for we pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning is found in Voices United, number 161. Welcome, happy morning, 161.
Let's be seated. This morning is from Luke 24, verses 1 to 12. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this, so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his eleven disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty room wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. The word of the Lord. Yes. Let us pray. Speak to us this morning, our dear Jesus. We pray that the entrance of your word will give us light and give us understanding. I pray that you will circumcise all our hearts to receive your word this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I can hear you. Amen. 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 We can do it more better. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I want to <coughs> greet everyone here this morning, those that are in the church, those that are watching us live at home, and those that are going to watch this uh, <coughs> service again anytime. We want to greet Happy Easter to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is risen. Is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. Yes. The Lord is risen. Yes. I can hear the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning of this month, I started a series that I tagged the journey. And the first journey that we first uh, look at, talk about is about fragrance of worship. We look at the case of Mary and Martha in the Gospel of John chapter 12 verses 1 to 12. Martha was serving, cooking, Mary Paul, that job, we can say like $52,000 on the Left of Jesus, the fragrance spread through the house as she used her hair cleaning the feet of Jesus. Judas rebuked Mary, but Jesus said, Let it be so. We have two types of people one, Martha was serving, Mary was cleaning the feet of Jesus. In our life, in the whole world, there are spaces for these two types of people. Many at times we do castigate Mary, but I want to tell you, this morning I've eaten. Yeah, we need them. 
I will need those who can call their call at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus told the disciples and everyone that what she has done will be made mention throughout the whole world. Our whole worship to God might not be that of call, but God also is requiring, requesting from us to show forth our worship and let it spread out to the whole world. And last Sunday we'll look at the man of Saul. We we'll look at the we we'll look at Luke chapter 23, verses 1 to 49. And we we'll look at where Jesus sat his uh, disciples and apostles. But where he was serving them, he had Judas with him, who sold him. He was his uh, treasurer. Not only was Judas there, he also had Peter, who denied him three times. And other apostles who ran away when Jesus was captured. We saw that Jesus was left alone. He died alone. But today, we'll be looking, we will continue our series on the journey. But I will be speaking today on the Lord as risen indeed. And I'll be speaking precisely to us from Luke chapter 23, uh, verses 1 to 12. When my father died, I have uh, some younger brothers and sisters that told me that uh, after some time, they will, be, they, will, they will be afraid, they were afraid in the house. I said, why? They said, it seems when, anytime they are in the dark, because sometimes there will be no light. So they said, anytime there is no light, it will feel like they are seeing a ghost. So they may not be able, they were not able to sleep alone. They will sleep maybe with their mom or with a senior person. Perhaps the story that we read this morning about women who were not able to sleep, who ran very early to the tomb of Jesus. Maybe the same thing happened to them. But before we go to that, I didn't know maybe you have ever heard the story of D. Lawrence. D. Lawrence lived, used to live in California, New York. He was a very powerful magician. And he said, he's going to die actually died and he also said that the third day that is going to resurrect actually very powerful man on the third day people gathered around his tomb and his body was coming his body was rising was rising but there was a thunder from nowhere it was not sunny it was not raining a thunder just came down and struck the body of D. Lawrence back to the ground. And that makes only Jesus among the founders or the established of the religions that only died and resurrected. During this time, we have so many things that is going on in our world. We have another variant of COVID that uh, is giving people a lot of headache. Also, we have uh, war in Ukraine. Not only that, we have rising cost of living and so many things. However, we have a light that is shining, us, shining on us again. The story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ celebrated on Easter Day, the most important day in the history of the world. The truth that Jesus Christ, who was crucified on the Roman cross, died and arose from the dead three days later. This truth set Christianity apart from every other system of belief. Every other founders of every religion that has ever existed has died. However, only Jesus Christ has risen again from the dead. If we were to strip Christianity of this bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, 
then our faith will be no more than just another religious system. The Bible passage that we read today summarizes the quest of the woman to give a defeating barrier to Jesus, who was crucified, died, and was put in the tomb in their presence. On Friday, they left with sorrow, only to get there early Saturday morning to find out that the tomb or the stone has been rolled away. In verse 1 that we read, he said, The stone has been what? Has been rolled away. They were pursued with a curious act. They went into the tomb, and the body of Jesus was not there. In this dark period, and pursuing <laughs> two men clothed in dazzling robes asked this terrible, terrified woman in verse 5 to 7. Can we read it? In, the, in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he's as reason. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Be raised again. The angel told them, or the two men told them, Is it here? He's risen from the dead. This pursued woman ran to the apostles and told them about the encounter. But this man, <coughs> they called the testimony of this woman, nonsense, unbelievable. They were not expecting Jesus Christ to do what? To resurrect again. They only know they have seen people dying, but they have never seen people rising. So it was strange to them, despite the fact that they have been with Jesus for a long time. Is it true that so many of us have been with Jesus for a long time? But some of what is written in the Bible, some of what we are hearing, some of what we are seeing, we don't understand it. The same thing happened to this apostle. The apostle are selected men who have been with Jesus. They have been with him through the thing and the tick. They have seen him healing. They have seen him raising the dead. They have seen him performing miracles. But at this time, they didn't believe. It's quite possible that some of us have witnessed some miracles. But at this point in our life, we are no more believing because sciences, pragmatism will want the details. I want to tell you, Christ is still in the art of performing what? Performing miracles. Let somebody say miracle. I can't hear you say miracle. Oh, you are not talking. Say miracle. Christ is still in the art of performing what? Miracle. And today, he will visit us with his miracle in the name of Jesus. This man, they never believed the story of this woman. They said it was a nonsense to them. In verse 11, the apostle themselves never thought Jesus would resurrect. So in verse 12, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strip of linen lying by themselves and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. And when you read from John chapter 20, verses 11 to 18, you will actually see there that not only did Jesus talk to Mary, but he showed himself to Mary. And Mary planned to touch Jesus. And Jesus told him, don't touch me yet. Go and tell the apostles. And what happened after then? Jesus showed himself to the apostles. Today, we are celebrating the great turning point of all time. Our Lord is put to death. His body was placed in the tomb only to be raised to new life on the third day. I will encourage you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It talked to us explicitly about the death of Jesus Christ, his resurrection. But in verse 17, it clarifies one thing that I want every one of us to take home today. One thing that I want us to do what? To take home to the inverse 17. It says, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith, my faith, is what? 
is put up. And our, we are seeing what? In our sins. But look, one thing that I want us to know is that this is historical. Are you hearing me? It is like telling people that we have one reverend at a certain time. Reverend Adepuni Adeni. He is from Nigeria. He is a, he, he, he is a, he is a minister at St. James United Church. Maybe in the next 20 years and no more here. And somebody said, it is no. It is not so. How will you have somebody from Nigeria? And you just take the, the record of ministers and show to that person. Look at it. The story that we are talking about is not just high say. It is not a figment. It is what actually happened on this earth. He died and he resurrected. And the Bible is telling us that if he had not resurrected, our faith is what? Is what? I do know one thing. That is the essence. That is the importance of Christianity. It's about the death. It's about the crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christianity is about what? The crucifixion, the death, and what? And the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is all. Okay. So today, when I ruminate over the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I came up with about, is it four or five? Four things, but I'm going to add one or two to it. Christ demonstrated his unfailing love for us at the cross. He died for our salvation and guaranteed our resurrection. Christ demonstrates his unfailing love for us at the cross, not because of our righteousness, not because of anything. Look, it is not because we are coming to the church. It is not because I am a failure. It is not because you have done something that it is just because he loved what? He loved every one of us. But we all have an option to make use of that love. Reading from Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his love, his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said to her, I have the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they do what? They die. And that is why today, when our loved one die, what do we do? We gather together to do what? Why? Why do we gather together to celebrate them? Because we know that this work is not their hand. We know that even our body may crash. We know that even this body may go down to the soul. We are still going to do what? To resurrect. L listen, you should know that. That should be your joy. Our, our this body will do what? We go down. But our spirit will join with who? For the spirit of the Lord. Number two, the resurrection of Christ. My God. The resurrection of Christ is the basis of what? Of Christian faith. That is the greatest miracle. And look, if we are preaching that Jesus resurrected and he has not resurrected, what does that mean? That means we are liars. Our preaching is what? It's in vain. Look, people, theologians, scientists, researchers, they have researched about the Bible for over two two thousand years, and they continue to research upon it. Some want to just say that it is lie, but up to today, all their evidences are showing that the Bible is what is true. So, if you are preaching that Jesus Christ resurrected and he never resurrected, our preaching is what? It's in vain. We are what? We are lying. Then our gathering, our sitting down, is just what? It's nonsense. Then the death of all the apostles. Those that ran away, but after witnessing, witness his resurrection, they become what? They became bold and was preaching from one place. Almost all of them died. Not much, only one died in natural death, but all of them died. They were bruised, they cut their head, 
they dip them in the, in the hot water, in the hot oil. Why would they do that? It was because they saw Jesus. He died. They saw him resurrected. They saw him ascended to heaven. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. And verse 17. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sin. Then number three. We all need to remember Easter on our Good Friday. Easter reminds us that every Good Friday in our lives will have an Easter Sunday. I don't know what you are passing through. I don't know the challenges that you are going to be passing through today. I don't know, maybe you are sick. Maybe you have family challenges, marital challenges, health challenges, financial challenges. That may be your Good Friday. Trust God that your Easter Sunday will do what? Your Easter Sunday will do what? Will come. I don't know. I've passed through it in my own lifetime. I don't know. Maybe you are passing through it now. Good Friday will not last. It's just for three days. And after that, we'll move to what? To Easter Sunday. No matter you are passing through. Look, let us tell all our brethren. Let us give them that good news. That no matter what they are passing through, God will intervene and give them what? Easter Sunday. Tell them. Our people need, need to hear this good news. Don't tell them about bad news. Tell them the good news. Tell them, tell them. Even if they don't have anything to eat, feed them and tell them it will be for what? For a short time. If they are sick, tell them it will be for what? For a short time. If they don't have friends, be their friends. It will be for what? For a short time. Eh? Number four. We are to be bearers of the good news of resurrection power. Even the doubted apostle became fearless preachers. Resurrection is good news. Early that morning, Mary did not find what she was looking for. Mary was looking for the dead body, but found something better she could have imagined. What did she find? Oh, my church, you are not talking. What did she find? You are not speaking. What did she find? The risen Savior. And that is why our faith is not futile. Ma Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, it says, And teaching them to obey everything I commanded you, and surely and with you, always to the world, to the very end of the age. Not only in 2022. God promised us that no matter what we are passing through, it will be with us till what? Till the very end of our age. Let me, let me put this. Easter reminds us that we need to resurrect from every behavior, from every attitude that we have that may not glorify God. It challenges us to look within ourselves. It challenges us to look at our life. It calls us to look at the mirror and adjust. It calls us to go forward, to go out, and look for somebody very next to us in our company, in our church, in our environment. How will he or she see Christ in my life? This Easter time, let us reflect and proclaim the risen Christ. Not simply inside the church and the church, but also in the world around us. Not with our lips, but also with actions and deeds. This world needs Jesus Christ now more than ever before. But most of all, May we not simply proclaim the good news, may we also believe it, so that the world may see Christ in our midst and claim the Lord as risen indeed. Hallelujah. It is not only hearing it, 
the important thing is for us to do what? To also believe it. The important thing is not for us to read it, to hear it. But the important thing is for us to do what? To believe it. And that is very, very important. Let us pray. In this silence, we come to you, O Lord. Your death, your resurrection, your ascension to heaven challenge us. Call us, <coughs> comfort us, favor us, and call us to action. It is a time to review and renew our relationship to you. Therefore, this morning we thank you because of the work that you performed on the cross of Calvary. We pray that your death and your resurrection will not go in vain in our life. I pray for everyone here this morning. I pray that you will interpret this word in their heart. The Spirit of God we make it to be meaningful to us and in our life we show what Christ can do. Thank you because you have done it. Holy Spirit, touch everyone here this morning. I pray that the Spirit of God will fall upon us and me. From the smallest person in this church to the, to the oldest person in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, spread amidst us. Continue to do your work. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 And Christ has offered himself to us. It is time for us to give our offer to him. We want to thank everyone for your gift, your giving. That's very, very awesome, and it amazes me how we give in this church. Some give through their envelopes, some give by e transfer, some give donate on the church website. There's a donate button on the church website. Some give by pack. No matter how you have been given, we want to say thank you. If you are not been given, we want to encourage you to start to give. It is this giving that makes our ministry in this church to continue. We have so many ministries that we are doing in this town, in this province, in Canada, and also throughout the whole world. We want to encourage every one of us to please let us give because the Lord loves what? A cheerful giver. Let us say the Lord loves what? A cheerful giver. Good morning, everyone. Um, could you join me in the altar in prayer, please? Dear God, we come before you with grateful hearts, recognizing how much you have given us in Christ Jesus. Bless these gifts that they may spread the hope and joy we feel this day to those who have not yet tasted your kindness. With our gifts, we offer ourselves to you in the name of your greatest gift. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, now could you please uh, join us and sing uh, Voices United uh, 459. Here, here, oh my Lord. Thank you. 
Good morning. Let us now affirm our faith by saying our new creed in Voices United number 918. We say it together. Holy Communion, may God be with us and also with your spirit. Let us open our hearts to God. Let us give thanks. We thank you, God, creator of all. From the beginning, you made the world and all its creatures. You make people to live for you and for one another. We praise you, O oh God. We praise you, O oh God. And with that, let us open to Voices United, number 918, as we affirm our faith by saying the new creed together. It's in Voices United, number 918. Please, you may stand as you are able. The new creed is in Voices United on 918, a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created. Let us come to Jesus, the Word in flesh, to reconcile and make new. The words in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence. To live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And please be seated. The Lord be with you. You created Adam and Eve and gave them a garden. You showed Noah a rainbow. You gave Moses strength to free your people and taught Miriam to sing. You gave courage to Esther and loyalty to Ruth. You gave David a heart to sing your praise and help them defeat the damned. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Yet even they turn away from you and forgot about you, as we do too. But you did not forget. You came to us in Jesus of Nazareth to show us how much you love us and to bring us back. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Jesus came as one of us, first as an infant, then a child. Later a youth, then an adult. He rejoiced with those who rejoiced and wept with those who wept. To the despairing, he spoke a word of hope to the sick. He gave healing to the hurting. He was a friend. Still, people turned away from you. They betrayed Jesus and nailed him to the cross. But he was lifted from the grave and restored to life that he might be with us and we with him, alive forevermore. Therefore, with all the saints in every time and place, we join the angels in their praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord of Almighty, Lord Almighty who stand in the heights, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, who stand in the heights. We gather at this table to remember that on the night before he died, Jesus ate with his friend. He took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Do this in my remembrance. The same night, Jesus also took a cup of wine 
After giving thanks, he passed it to his friend, saying, Drink this cup, pour out for you, and the promise of God, whenever you drink it, remember me. Let us take the prayers uh, that follows. We remember Jesus' death and celebrate his resurrection. We await his hope, his coming again to bring peace and justice to heart. And we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send the Holy Spirit upon us and what we do here that we and this gift touched by your spirit may be the signs of life and love to one another and to the world you love. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Give us this day in our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we are the Lord of the trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, and please, it is uh, prepackaged uh, wine and bread. So please be free to take as you like and if you need help in opening it, please tell our ministers they will assist you in doing it.
the, the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We who have made our one body, for we all share the same God. The cup for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The cup which we drink is a participation in the blood of Christ. Together in the prayer afternoon, please. Life give my God, God. We give me thanks for the gift of Jesus Christ Christ. in the simplicity of his soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That one is, is good, but not the best. Amen. Amen. Please.
be seated. I want to intimate us with you. Next Sunday is going to be powerful. We have him singing. The choir will be leading us in him singing. So please prepare yourself to come. Come and enjoy good music on that day. This is after Easter. First Sunday after Easter, come, come and dance. And first Sunday in the month of May is going to be powerful. It's our first Sunday, it's going to be powerful. Second Sunday in the month of May will be our graduation day and our youth. Oh, sorry. Second, second Sunday in May is Youth Sunday. The youth, they have some songs. Do you know about choreography? Are you ready to dance? Just prepare yourself. And the month of May is loaded. It's what? It's, in the month of May, we have some uh, guest preacher also. Who are they? Just prepare yourself. I want to invite you to please make sure you are in the church. And every Wednesday, like this Wednesday, 10 30 in the morning, we have Bible study. At 6 in the evening, we have Youth for the Purpose by Zoom. It is through Zoom. Anywhere you are, you can do what? You can connect with us. And the man who led the prayer after communion, I read about him in the paper. When he was 19, he started coaching what? Basketball. And he has coached for how many years? 50 years. I just read that not too long. And he has coached about three generations. He coached the mother, he coached the, the mother, and he coached also the so we want to celebrate day today. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Look. <laughs> we like to celebrate one another in this church. It is good to celebrate. So if you have any birthday, any anniversary, any celebrations, we are ready to do what? To celebrate with you. So let us know. We would like to do what? To eat and dance with you. Please don't forget your gift, Easter gift. Uh, we have bunny, we have chocolate, we have chocolate. Then there are foods after the service also. Meet Bob and tell him you want to do what? You want to eat. And also, we have get together also after the church. Let's meet, let's chat, and uh, I'm ready to visit anytime you want to come. Do you hear me? Prepare food. I'll come and do what? I love food. Don't tell anybody. I love what? I love food. With that, let us take the closing prayer. And please, you may stand as you are able. The closing prayer together. Go now in peace. Yeah. Never be afraid. God will go with you each hour every day. Go now in all and show your belief. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there watching from above. Go now in peace, in faith, and in love. Amen. 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 Christ is risen. He is risen Christ is risen. He is risen Christ is risen. He is risen And our prayer benediction is from Voices United 971. Amen. Amen.